Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is March 23rd, 2021, and I am going to bring a word today from the Lord called Passover, not Easter. Have you ever wondered why the church of Jesus Christ is so powerless? Well, this teaching today is going to reveal why that is the case. Most Christians, in fact, almost all Christians in the Western world, and I don't know what they do in the Eastern world in Russia, but almost all Christians in the Western world celebrate Easter instead of Passover. They make colored eggs, they do Easter egg hunts, they dress up their little children in new dresses for church, and they go home and they eat pork for their main meal. Did you know that the word Easter does not even appear in the scripture? You only find that word in the King James Version. And so for you King James only people, please take note and learn. Acts 12.4 in the King James Version says this, And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. The word Easter is really the word Pesach in Greek, which means Passover. Reading the same verse, Acts 12.4, from the English Standard Version, and go to any other version except the King James Version practically, and you'll find this word. It reads, And when he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. Early on in the history of the Christian church, the Christian church decided to change this word to Easter, evidently, in order to celebrate it on a pagan holiday rather than at the actual time that it was supposed to be celebrated. 1 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says that Jesus is our Passover lamb. The scriptures, the gospels make it clear that Jesus was sacrificed on Passover day. That's the 14th day of Nisan of this month, this Hebrew month. And that was the day that Jesus was crucified. This year, that occurs this coming Saturday, the 27th. Passover itself begins the evening of Friday the 26th, goes on a Saturday. Saturday the 27th is actually Passover day, the day that Jesus would have been crucified had he been alive now and, and at his time to be crucified. Now, why is this important? It's important because Christians don't even understand what Passover is about. I had been a Christian 20 years until I finally realized I should, have, I should be celebrating Passover, not Easter. Now, I'm going to bring a teaching where I have to be very concise and particular, so I'm going to be reading a lot rather than doing an extemporaneous presentation of the Word of God today. So I will be reading a lot today because I have to get through a lot of detail, and it's very important for us to understand this detail with respect to this issue. So let us seek wisdom concerning the meaning of first Passover. First, remember all biblical historical events 
are also divine parables, which portray spiritual truth, which is not readily understood in the natural historical level. The Lord designed scripture this way so that only the diligent, only those who seek eyes to see and ears to hear can ever come to understand his ways. <clears throat> Critical, you must understand this or you literally cannot go on in the word of God. Recall that God instituted the feast of Passover just before executing his 10th judgment upon Egypt in the days of Moses. Exodus 12, verse 29, explains this final plague. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. The rules for keeping Passover are also found in Exodus chapter 12. We must understand these rules for they foretell spiritual truth for this hour, this hour that we live in right now. I literally believe that this year, 2021, we could see the fulfillment of Passover. Now reading from Exodus 12, verses 1 through 6. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, and here I am reading from the King James Version, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Literally, that is between the two evenings, between noon and... Uh, the evening on the 14th day of the first month of Israel. First notice that God changed the times of the year for Israel just before the Exodus. Rosh Hashanah is the first day of Tishri, but that would no longer be their New Year's Day. God changed that day to the seventh month. The first month is called Abib or Nisan. Nisan begins. Nisan has already begun this year, and we are now coming close to the actual day of Passover. Now, although the writers of the Gospels do not give us the date, we can count the days to Jesus' crucifixion. They were supposed to choose their sacrificial lamb on the 10th day, from what I just read here in, in Exodus. By looking at the scripture, it appears that that day is the day that we traditionally call Palm Sunday and was the time when Jesus came into Jerusalem for his triumphal entry. This is when the people received Jesus. Now Mark 11, 11 says that it was already late when Jesus entered Jerusalem, so I believe that that was after the evening time. And therefore, rather than being the ninth, as it appears if it was during the day, it appears that he came in on the 10th. And so he would then have been chosen as the Passover lamb on the 10th, which is He's chosen as the king, but because he was crucified on the 14th, he was actually chosen as the Passover lamb on the 10th of that month. See, God always works things out perfectly according to his plan and according to the prophetic timetable. That's why I say that everything 
in Scripture is a parable. It is a prophetic representation of things, not only that occurred, but that are to come. The English Standard Version of the Bible renders Exodus 12, 6 like this. You shall keep the lamb until the 14th day of this month when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. The footnote there says that the word twilight literally means between the two evenings which evidently means between the time that the sun begins to set at or about noon and its actual setting at dusk. The Orthodox Jewish Bible confirms this meaning by translating the verse as, quote, and it will be with you for mishmerit, examination, checking for blemishes, up until the 14th day of the same month. And, you shall slaughter it in the afternoon before dark. This is important to understand because the scriptures testify that Jesus was in fact crucified on the preparation day of Passover, which is Nisan 14, and that the crucifixion occurred just after noon and that Jesus died right at 3 p.m. See John 19, verse 14, and Luke 23, verse 44. And remember that the sixth hour means 12 o'clock noon and the ninth hour means 3 o'clock p.m. Thus the Lamb of God, who was chosen on the tenth day of the month, was in fact slaughtered in the afternoon between the two evenings on Nisan 14. Since Jesus was our Passover Lamb, everything had to occur exactly as prophesied. Another important aspect of this crucifixion is that Jesus' legs were not broken, whereas the others crucified that day had their legs broken in order to quicken their death. John, who was an eyewitness of Jesus' death, said this. This is in John chapter 19, verses 31 to 37. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation, and the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day, that means the day after Passover, according to the scripture, and you have to go back to um, Leviticus to see the, the explanation of the feast. The day after Passover was the first day of unleavened bread. And it was a special Sabbath on which you did no work. So that's what this is talking about here. So it was called a high holy day. Therefore the Jews besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they brake not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true. Now this is John, the Apostle John. He is an eyewitness. He is a man that does not lie, and he is an eyewitness. And he knows that he says the truth, that you might believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they have pierced. John references Exodus 12, verse 46, Numbers 9, verse 12, and Psalm 34, verse 20, with respect to none of Christ's bones being broken. Also notice that John specifically tells his readers that he saw these events, that he speaks the truth, and that all, all these things occurred in, partic in a particular way so that the scripture should be fulfilled. He says these things, as if he was testifying in a court of law for one reason, that we would believe what he says. 
Moses' next commands concerning the Passover are these. This is in Exodus 12, verse 13. And they shall take of the blood and strike, no, the 12, 7, I'm sorry. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat. Concerning this blood, God says, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. That's Exodus 12, 13. Then, when Moses instructed the elders of Israel concerning this command, he said this. Now this is Exodus 12, verses 21 to 27. Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood upon the lentil and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in under your houses to smite you. And you shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass when you are come to the land which the Lord will give you according as he promised that you shall keep this service. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What do you mean by this service? You shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. And the people bowed their heads and worshipped. Now consider the application of the blood of the Passover lamb upon each home. First, one had to splash blood upon the lintel of the door, which is the load-bearing beam across the top of the door. Next, he had to apply the blood on each of the two posts that supported the lintel. Walk over to a door and do this. If you put the blood in the middle of the lintel and then draw your hand to the left door post, at or about your shoulder's height and apply the blood and then move your hand over to the right door post and do the same, you will see that you have just created an imaginary cross. Now remember that God commanded every person to make this sign of the cross with the Passover lamb's blood upon their houses so that the angel of death would pass over them so that they would be saved from death. Clearly, this prophetically speaks of applying the blood of Jesus to our sinful souls, the doors of our lives, so that we too will be saved. So that is the basic meaning of Passover. And that's about as far as you get in the Christian church. That's about the only lesson you ever learn in the Christian church. And you might actually learn that that, pa- that actually happened on Passover and that Jesus' blood saves us from our sins and brings us salvation. That is the colostrum of the word. That's not even yet to the milk of the word. Very few churches go beyond the milk of the word to the meat of the word. The next video is going to begin to take us into the meat of the word. My hope is that I will be able to produce a video each of the rest of the days of this week. This is Tuesday. And I think it will take probably a total of four to complete this. This series of lessons is also part of my teaching on the Kodeshim, the Holy Ones, the Overcomers, the First Fruits, the Firstborn. So I urge you to continue watching. 
And I pray that God will open your eyes to see, your ears to hear, and your will to do his word. Amen.